Ah, learning some cryptography, huh? Here we go. Okay, 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 okay. So, we have um, OpenSSL in most cases when you want to deal with cryptography and specifically like also SSL and TLS. Uh, you have OpenSSL, which I guess is what you clicked on this video to learn about, at least the basics. So, OpenSSL, if you don't know, very lightningly explained is just cryptography and SSL TLS toolkit, which I guess, I mean, I guess you can read it, so yeah, that's what it is. But what that means is it comes bundle, it's a project that contains a library for crypto SSL and TLS called libssl and it's the main thing that the project is developing but that library in of itself can't be interacted with in any in any way by the end user so either so so either not either nothing you need to have a tool a, a program through which the user can interact to that through that um library to encrypt, to hash, to sign, to do various crypto cryptography related operations on the system. So for that, the OpenSSL project comes bundled also with OpenS the OpenSSL tool, uh, very nicely accessible directly from the command line, which um, in my opinion, like uh, I'm guessing, operates um, like interacts with the libssl library i'm not sure but i suppose that because if you think about it logically if you're developing a library for crypto and then also develop and, and then you also make a tool for crypto for the same purpose you would use a, the same library like you would use libssl for that why would you redo it from scratch or use another library just use libssl the, the one that you created right so it pretty much, I'm pretty sure that it uses libssl in the background, so it provides a gateway to, a gateway like, a way for end users to interact with the library without having to create a project that uses it, okay? That's what it is. So, okay, 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 with an example now, let's start with an example. So suppose you are in TMP, TMP, nice, um, nice any convention, I, I know. And you have this file, okay, you have this file and you wanna, let's see, let's inspect the file. Linux training security, very nice, very nice file indeed. It originates from Linux, uh, Linux training BE, if you're interested, not this one, not this fucking website, Linux training BE. Okay, if you're interested in those courses, you can just take a look at them, they are open source for Linux and uh, recommended, I recommend them. So, okay, suppose this file, and you wanna encrypt it because you either wanna store it somewhere, suppose this is a backup file, and you wanna store it somewhere, or you, this is private information, and you wanna send it to somebody, like password file, or password that database, or something, and you wanna send it to somebody, or make a backup of it for the future. So, how do you do that? Open SSL, dash dash help. It's always the first thing that, you, that you're gonna do, okay? And here you can see standard commands, message that digest commands, cipher commands. Those two, I don't know why they included them in the help um, page, because it kind of confused me on the first the first time I was dealing with this. Why not just have the standard commands the only thing? Because these are basically the sub commands, like sort of the post fixes that you're go the, the like commands that you're going to post fix after the OpenSSL command. And these are basically just how you're going to like com cipher commands okay you're going to specify those ciphers which ciphers you or mes which message digest commands you want to use for those commands over here okay so for example you want to encrypt something with the aes 256 cbc or you want to encrypt not encrypt i guess i don't know you want to generate where the fuck? Oh, generate picky, and then whichever uh, message digest command. Not really. What the hell? What am I talking about? You wanna digest something, and then which uh, message digest command to you? You wanna use? But this is confusing. I don't know why they included them. If you wanna take a look at cipher commands, just use OpenSSL ENC list. 
I'll use OpenSSL list cipher, I think it was, or ciphers, or ciphers, or oh, fucking, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess whatever you want to list. Okay, list all, all algorithms. And you can scan through this lovely mess to find something that you're interested in. But for the most part, if you want to encrypt something, you're going to deal with the ENC standard command. If you want to generate private public key, if you, you're going to deal with this. If you want to deal with public private keys, you're going to use this. If you want to list stuff, this. If you want to digest, compare, show ciphers, use um, 2CA for X509, uh, X509, help, yeah, I can, you can take a look at all of this in the manual page, whatever. So, okay, let's encrypt something, let's encrypt some stuff. This is how you take a look at the documentation for a specific subcommand, by the way. Manual, open, SSL, dash, name of the command, like CMS, ENC, whatever, okay? And here it shows you various flags that you can pass to the command to um, change the parameters or change the behavior depending on, on what you want to do. The most important ones are usually a cipher, which is a cipher that, you, that you're going to use for encryption or decryption. Uh, then input file, output file, input file, the file that, on which you're going to execute the operation on usually encryption decryption, the output file where to output that calculated output. Password, if you want to pass the password as a command line argument, else it's, going, it's just going to prompt you after you hit enter. Uh, dash E for encrypt, dash D for decrypt, dash A or dash base 64 to um, store or handle data as base 64 so after you encrypt you store it as base 64 in the output file or before you decrypt the data you base 64 decode it and then decrypt decrypt it okay um then let's see what's what more is very suspiciously interesting dash either dash pvkdf2 this is for password stretching if you don't know any of these uh like terms, you can take a look at the description. I have them. I have the links associated with each term. So, yeah, you can take a look at them on Wikipedia and read it, and you will understand. So dash ether for password stretching. Short description. You take a password, but before using it for encryption, for encryption, you stretch it. You apply various operations like hashing multiple times. In this case, you can specify how many times, like ten thousand, a hundred thousand. I don't know. Uh, to stretch the password and make it bigger and make it um, word list uh, proof so that word lists cannot crack it or that I mean they can if you if they calculate those iteration uh, hashes um, but they will need a lot more a lot more uh, calculations for each for each um, for each password. To check each password, they will need extremely more calculation. Um, they will need to do a lot more calculations than, than just if you had no iterations, no hashing, you know. Um, in short, what this means is the bigger the number, the better. The bigger the number, the harder it will be to crack it um, to a word list. Same for salt. Basically, before using the password to encrypt the thing, Take random chunk of data, put it into the password, mix it together, and send and encrypt it. Then IV, okay, this is more technical data information for AES and other algorithms. Um, no pad, disable standard block padding. Okay, you don't want to do that, I guess. Uh, what else? What else? What else? And that's that's it. That's it. We can actually encrypt already the thing. So open SSL ENC. Okay. Then AES. We you, remember we need to. Uh, specified cipher. So which cipher? Suppose AES, we can do open SSL list all well um, ENC ciphers. Okay, you can see the ciphers here. And here is the one that we want to use in this case. Or actually, we're not weak in this case, we're not gonna use one two eight. We're gonna use the based one that even the government uses, two five six. CBC, where the heck is it, bro? What the fuck? Uh, 
CBC. Yeah, it should be somewhere here. I just, I'm not, I don't happen to see it. So, CBC, here it is. Okay. Uh, the bigger the number, the better, except it's going to take more computational time, but we don't care because this is an example. So, yeah, AES256 CBC. Then. You need, um, what do you need? What do you need? Yeah, we need to encrypt the data, obviously. Because if you take a look at OpenS, a look, take a look at OpenSSL ENC, dash E is for encrypt, then dash A or dash base64 to store the output of the encryption as a base64 string into the output, into the output file. Then ether for iterations, so let's do 10,000. And then apply some salting, salt, salt, salt. And what else? What else? I think that's it. We just need to take the output file, the input file now, and the output file like, and cipher that ENC. Now enter the password. Test, test. And as you can see, we have the encrypted file now. So what the tool has done is taken the input, the ca the contents of this file. Um, passed it to this cipher, encrypted it, uh, but, but before applying the password, it salted it and it, it uh, stretched it uh, this many iterations, then encrypted it through this algorithm, and base64 the output and stored it into the output file, which we can view over here. And yeah, it's base64. So. <clears throat> Uh, as you can see now, if we go to file, home, unknown, TMP, TMP, and inspect it, you can see that it's just random garbage data. You can't actually make sense of this. Even if we do a hex dump, cipher, um, you can see that they are clearly very different in terms of how the data looks. So, okay, that's cool. And now you want to decrypt this, okay? Let's fucking remove this Linux training security and we just have this encrypted file. How do we decrypt it? How do we... This is our backup and we want to get... Uh, we want to decrypt it. We want to access our data. How do we do that? Well, it's as simple as OpenSSL, uh, ENC, and the algorithm that you want to use. So AES, we used AES5256 uh, CBC. Decrypt. The number of iterations to stretch the password which we will um, insert to get to the real password and then uh, base64 so expect the input data to be base64 uh, and just output it to linux training security.pdf then we enter our password test and as you can see we have our data now let's do a SHA sum of all of these. And surprisingly, what the fuck, they're different. But I think they're different just because of the file name and other content, like other things like um, file date of creation and stuff like that. But if we actually, oh wait, no, they, they, they are different because this is the encrypted one, this is the decrypted one. I, I thought I was comparing the initial and the decrypted version. Okay, whatever. Okay, so if we go back here and open the f decrypted file, you can see that we have successfully decrypted the, uh, the file. So that's cool. That's cool. Um, and as you can see, if I try to decrypt it with another um, password, it's not going to work. So how does this command actually work? Well, it just takes the input file that's encrypted in base64 because remember we have base64 that the output before uh, after encrypting it and sending it to the output file. We have we have salted the password, stretched it and then used it for encryption of this cipher and then base64 that and send it into the cipher ENC. Here we are taking the password, um, stretching it, uh, and then decrypting the input data, which is as base64, uh, decrypting it as this algorithm and then sending the output to this file. 
and that uh, is the result. So, okay, that's a quick guide through for OpenSSL. Now, of course, you have other use cases for OpenSSL like uh, X509 um, for generating certificates and um, CAs and CSRs and CLSs and stuff like that. But perhaps that's that's for another video, or perhaps you can find that in um, online. I just wanted to create a guide for this video, so yeah. Uh, I think that's it actually. Yeah. Thanks for watching.